According to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence Organization, one in every four women will experience domestic violence in her lifetime. An estimated 1.3 million women are victims of physical assault by an intimate partner each year, and 85% of domestic violence victims are women. Today we're going to meet a victim of domestic violence. Her name is Edith McCochran. She was abused verbally and physically by her husband for three years. She finally reached out for help to an organization called No More Tears. And joining us also this morning is the founder of No More Tears, Somi Ali. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to be here. Oh no, thank you so much for being here. And Edith, I, I have to tell you that I, I not only do I want to thank you for being here, thank but, you, um, guys. Thank you for your courage to come here and tell us your story. Um, tell us when the abuse started. What happened? You got married to your husband, correct? Yes, that's correct. In 2006, we got married, and a couple months after that, started the abuse. What kind of abuse? It was ba basically verbally, emotionally, physically. Why didn't you run away? Were you scared to? What? I basically didn't know what to do. I was confused. I thought love was kind of was kind of looked like that. I really didn't know what love was. You thought it was normal. You, I thought it was normal. I thought it was normal. I thought that I had the hope that he might, that the situations might change, but I thought that marriage is forever. And when did it get impossible? When did the abuse get to be too much? What happened? What did he do? When he actually, we get into an argument and he pushed me on the bed and then he grabbed the pillows and he said, I'm gonna kill you. And after I kill you, I will kill myself. And that, right there and then, I, I saw this is not normal. He had a pillow over your face? Yes. Couldn't breathe. I thought that I would die. Right there, I said, I get here. But something in my back said that I have a child. I have another child. And I said, I have to do something. And forcing, I don't know, I don't even know. I think God, in that moment, he handled the, the situation and helped me, give me strength. And I push him, and I walk away. He tried to grab me by the leg, but I walk away. And there were many times, and you told me this uh, earlier, that you had bruises in your body and yeah. he would throw you against the wall? Yeah, yeah. Can you tell me about that? Yeah. Um, when he get angered, um, he was the kind of person that he throw things in the floor or through the wall, and sometimes, constantly, he pushed me through the walls. And when he grabbed me, because he was all bigger than I, he grabbed me by my arms, so I basically had a lot of bruises in my arms. And when I go work, my boss said, what's going on? Why you all the time have bruises? And I had to use uh, lone sleep, you know. To hide it. To hide it. And sometimes he pushed me so hard that he threw me to the wall and was the switch there, and he broke my back. <sighs> so I was bleeding. Um, I almost tried to kill myself when I try to, to escape from this and take pills to go to bed and don't hear anything and I was almost to pass away. Now Somi, your organization has helped many women like Edith. In fact, I was reading here 51 women like Edith. You must hear these stories time and time again about the abuse and, and them thinking, you know, it's, it's normal and I'm too scared to leave, right? Mm -hmm. They're terrified to leave because they don't have the support. They don't think they have the support. They have nowhere to go. They have children. They have no financial backing. Right. And um, they're just terrified. And a lot of the women that we work with are brought to the U.S. from different countries. So the husbands inevitably um, scare them that if they take a stand against this, they will be deported back to their countries. So that's a, a pivotal reason why they don't speak speak out and also they don't really know where to go and they're so afraid and Edith you had nowhere to go I know you you were evicted uh, from your apartment your husband wasn't That's paying right. the bills you were you were on the street on the street and with then, the baby that we had together that we have together and he, then what happened how did um, a neighbor from the area she knew what was going on one point she saw my husband acting like that and then she reached out, no more tears, and then she let me know about it. And, and you made the phone call? Yes. 
Somi, let's talk a little bit about No More Tears. Tell me exactly what it is. I know it's a nonprofit organization that helps women, but it's it's more than that. Well, we're we're different because we provide immediate care. So when I got a call from Edith, I was there the next morning picking her up and taking her to a safe space. And the the services that we provide, first of all, no domestic violence victim should be on a waiting list. And that's how we differ from other nonprofits. If you're being physically abused, you cannot be told that you have to wait a year. Absolutely. Um, so we're, we differ in that in that aspect. Uh, we pro pick them up, take them to a safe space. That's what we did with Edith. We teach them how to drive, oh, wow. um, help them uh, get their paperwork sorted out. We work with private attorneys that do pro bono work for us. We provide them with transportation, wow. help them obtain food stamps. Now, how do they find out about you? Well, I go to various um, Indian, Pakistani, Hispanic grocery stores and restaurants because no matter how abused the women are, the husbands will inevitably send them to go get groceries really? because, because they want them to cook and they're treating them like housemaids and slaves. So you've been able to reach out to a lot of women because you leave these pamphlets at those at the, the ethnic stores. grocery stores and restaurants. I also go to mosques because in uh, my religion, in my uh, in the Muslim religion, the women are segregated in the mosques. I use that to my advantage and I stick the brochures in there. And they're in four different languages, the, correct? It's in Arabic, Spanish, Creole, um, Hindi and Urdu and English, so f six languages. So these women that go there, they find these pamphlets that you leave off and you actually get a phone call maybe from a grocery store and says, help me? Yes. Oh, that's yes. amazing. And when they call, I'm with a police officer in the car at that very minute to go pick them up. Now you've been doing this since 2007 and I know you do this for personal reasons because you are from Pakistan. Yes. Uh, and but you grew up, obviously, uh, you weren't a victim of abuse, but you saw it firsthand, didn't you? I saw a lot of abuse growing up in Pakistan. I saw it in extended family. I saw it in some of my mom's friends would come over bruised and beaten. And I would ask my mother, why can't we help them? What is going on? And she said, no one will take them in. Ugh. It's an accepted norm in Pakistan. And domestic violence has no prejudices. It's from the upper class to the labor class to the middle class. We had servants in Pakistan when we were growing up. Um, one of the servant Come, came to us once, burnt fully. She was acid burned by her husband um, because he cheated on her. She fought with him and he threw acid on her. Oh so it, it's not really class specific. Right. You know, it could be in a professor or a doctor. It's universal and it's not culture specific either. It's incredible what you're doing, and I applaud what you're doing, Thank Somi, you. very, very Thank much, you. because so far, again, you've helped 51 women yes. in this country. Uh, Edith, I want to end with you, um, because Thank you've you. been through so much. You had the courage to move on. For a woman out there that maybe is facing what you went through, what would you tell her? That have faith in his strength, because if they don't speak out, if they don't try to help themselves, then no one is going to be able to know what's going on. So they have to uh, understand this is not a normal environment. No for her, no for the victim, and no for the child, too. How are you and your son doing now? We're doing great. Good. We're doing great. Your future looks better. Yeah. Then the future now looks much better. Thank you so much for thank being here. Thank you to you guys. I really appreciate it and good luck to you. Thank you so much. Show me, thank you so much for what you do. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And if you are a victim of domestic violence, you need to speak out like you heard Edith say. People like Somi are there to help 24 hours a day waiting for the phone call. For more information on No More Tears, visit their website at nmtproject.org.